الله سبحانه وتعالى ومن اظلم ممن منع مساجد الله ان يذكر فيها اسمه وسعى في خرابها اولئك ما كان لهم ان يدخلوها الا طائفين لهم في الدنيا خزي ولهم في الاخره عذاب عظيم. So الله سبحانه وتعالى said in the Quran Who does more wrong than those who prevents Allah's name from being mentioned in his places of worship and strive to destroy them? Such people have no right to enter these places except with fear. For them is disgrace in this world and they will suffer a tremendous punishment in the hereafter. So this ayah, when it was revealed, there is a couple of stories why this ayah was revealed. One of them is when Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was in front of Al Kaaba praying at the beginning of Islam in Mecca, the Quraysh start telling each other, like, how come we let this man praying in front of Al Kaaba and we are just sitting doing nothing? So Abu Jahl told them. Well, next time I'm going to see him, I'm going to go over him while he's making sujood. I'm going to step over his head. It's not going to be easy for him this time. So, next time, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi went to pray in front of Al Kaaba, and everybody was looking for Abu Jahl to see if he's going to fulfill his promise or not. Abu Jahl came, and Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi was praying, and like his friend basically was looking at him as like, oh, are you gonna do something? And he went, and when he came closer to him, he suddenly stopped. And a few moments after, he just turned around. And he looked different, he looked so scared. And he told his friend that, it feels like if I took one more step, I will be taken away. And Prophet Muhammad said, if he took one more step, the angel will take him apart. So this is one story that talks about this ayah who prevented people from praying or coming to the places of worship. But another story talks about the Jewish when, when they prevented the Christian from entering Kanisat al-Qiyamah, the church of al-Qiyamah, which is one big church, very historical church. So they prevented them from going to the church to the point that they called it Kanisat al the church of garbage. So that's another opinion that why this ayah was revealed. Another opinion that we'll talk about when the when Quraysh prevented Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and his companion to make Umrah on the year of Al Hudaybiyah, where they had the, uh, the Hudaybiyah Kabul, when they tried to make Umrah, but Quraysh prevented them. And then they made the covenant or the, the, the peace agreement between them. Well, it doesn't matter which story is true, but what we see common between these opinions is there was a physical prevention from praying or going to the places of worship. Either it was Al Kaaba or it was the church, but all of them were the places of worship. And there was a physical prevention. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in this ayah. Who would do more wrong than that? That basically this is the worst thing. Like, Alhamdulillah, we live in a, in a society that we do not have physical prevention from coming to the masjid. Alhamdulillah. However, 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 when sometimes we fall into this trap. Maybe it's not physical prevention from coming to the masjid, which is the simple understanding when we hear this ayah. However, imagine a person becoming new Muslim, left his family, left his support system, left everything, like imagine changing your whole faith to become Muslim. I'm sure his family will not, most of the time will not be supporting his friend, his community, and leaving all of that behind, Imagine how to find this is on coming to the masjid to find new support, new community, new religion, new faith. So if we are not welcome and if we are not conscious about this and welcome this new 
Muslim with open arm, not just hugging them, but follow up with them, making sure that they come to the masjid. If they did not have, if they don't find, find this opportunity or this support system, they're going to turn away. Maybe they will stay Muslim, but just by name. So this is one way of pushing people away from the masjid. Another way is being rude to one another or push people away because of our behaviors, because of our manners. Quick story, at the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu a Muslim Bedouin. So he's a Muslim but he's Bedouin. Why this is important? I mean he was not coming often because he was far away from the center where Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and his companion is. So one day, Probably he doesn't come to the center where, where all the Muslims are. He comes maybe probably every once in a while because he's a Bedouin. So one time he came and he entered the message of the Prophet Muhammad and he found a corner and he started peeing. He literally peed in the message. So normal reaction from the Sahaba, they came aggressively toward him like trying to get really mad at him, how dare you be in the masjid. However, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu which is our role model, what did he do? He told them, no, let him finish. So he did not just tell him, oh no, go out or something, or don't harm him, but make sure he leaves. No, he told them, let him finish. And once he finished, he taught him after that. Because he understood that this is a Bedouin, someone who doesn't know. So that was the reaction of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu so here, in our time now, we will find people sometimes make mistakes. But we have to follow the example of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu teaching them with good manners, with hikmah, <laughs> right? This is from the Quran. <laughs> Argue with them with nice words. And that when he was talking about the kuffar. Imagine your brother Muslims and sisters, how should we teach them? and discuss with them. We should be lenient with one another, give excuses to one another. So this is another example of pushing people away from the masjid if we are not, if we are not aware of our behaviors and if we are not aware of our conduct. Another example is the kids. Kids come to the masjid, alhamdulillah, Many kids come on Friday, Saturday. But how do we deal with them? Are we good to them? Do they make problems? Do we yell at them? Do we push them away? Or are we nice to them? Do we teach them with wisdom? Or not? A true story that happened when I, when I was a kid. One of my friends, he went to the masjid to pray. And I was there. And the masjid was kind of like in an angle. You know some masjid, like you have to pray toward the angle. So the first line is not as long as this one, right? So my friend, we, we were like in middle school. And he stepped forward. We came early and he was praying in the first line. And just a man, just taken like this from his shirt and he pulled him back. And he told him, go pray over there. Very rude. Pulling a kid away from the first line to put yourself in the first line and to tell him go pray over there. Do you think this, this boy went to pray over there? Of course not. He went to the door. He said, I'm not going to pray here. I'm, I'm not going to come here. And this is, I'm sure, this is a mark that is stayed in, uh, within himself for a long time. Because these things matter, especially for the kids. It is so hard to let go of these feelings when you are embarrassed, when you are yelled at from someone that you don't know for no reason or for a simple mistake. So these are just some examples that we should be aware of. So we don't fall on the, uh, we don't fall on the example of وَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِنَّا مَنَعَ مَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ أَنْ يُذْكَرَ فِي هَسْمُهُ وَسَعَ فِي خَرَابِهَا We don't want to be part of the people who prevent other from coming to the message. And as we mentioned, it doesn't have to be physical. Just the way we talk, the way we deal, the way we help or not help others will prevent people from coming to the message. So I hope we help 
each other to bring the message back, to make the message live again, to attend, to try as much as we can to come as a family to the message on a daily prayer, when there is activity, when there is an event. إحياء المساجد في هذا المجتمع يجب أن تكون أولوية لكل المسلمين. أقول قول هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.